on uh, what else you got at nine o'clock. We know uh, we know from past studies that put selling strategy outperforms other traditional strategies. We're going to, like I said, we're going to expand on that a lot in the next, in the coming segment. And it's not that we're just sitting here to, we're bearish in the market talking about put selling strategies. I know that seems like they're, you know, that's a little almost counter, counterintuitive or, or, mm -hmm. or almost hypocritical to a certain extent, but it's not, but Who's that's not bearish on the market. Right? Um, uh, we're just throwing out examples because in order for us to get everybody to the next level, this stuff has to be kind of almost second nature sure. and you have to believe it. Um, the one thing we do, I think, better than anybody else is um, is that we stay on a subject long enough for everyone to really understand, you know, kind of all the guts. Like, like most of our listeners can recite the numbers, and that's powerful. Right. Um, so we know from past studies that – well, we already did that one. Here. With the advantage of only having to put up roughly 20 percent of the underlying, we can take – advantage of the strategy and accounts with limited capital as well. We wanted to look at specifically to see if a particular strike was better than another from a buying power reduction standpoint, because the email that we get the most with respect to smaller accounts is, um, number one, I have, I'm have i trading in an IRA account, so I have limited capital to use, or number two, um, you know, I can only trade smaller stocks because I have certain permissioning limitations, all this kind of stuff. So we're just said, okay, let us, let us hammer down to the tightest specific bit of information so that if you ever need to make the case or whatever it is, you can do that. Correct. The further out of the money we sell a put, the higher the probability of profit, but the smaller the credit received. Assuming that we're bullish, is it better to sell a closer at the money put to collect a larger credit and not have the room to the downside? And is selling puts a viable strategy for smaller accounts? So the number one email question is not so much is it a viable strategy, but is it better to collect a bigger credit and have a lower probability of success, or is it better to have a um, a smaller credit and a higher probability of success? And we we struggle with the same thing, so we stick around that 30 35% level. Correct. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. To test this, we looked at four years of SPY options from 2009 to 2012. Okay. Agree, we understand it's a bull market, but that's all we have to work with right now. Each expiration cycle... We sold the one standard deviation put nearest to 84% out of the money, and then we sold the nearest out of the money put. So essentially just something like, let's call it just like an at the money, just one strike out of the money. Mm -hmm. We let them both expire to cash each cycle. Let's go to the next slide. And we do that just so it's easier to do. You don't have to so do it So it makes sense that the one standard deviation put had more winners. In fact, the one standard deviation put 49 winners and the two standard deviation, I'm sorry, and the at the money put 41 winners. And how many instances is that? I forgot. What was the number of years? It's, just let's uh, check. Four years. We looked at four years of SPY options from 2009 to 2012, each expiration cycle. Four years. I'm just trying to think. It has to be a little, it has to be longer than four years. Because there's 49 instances. 12 times f uh, 4 is 48. So it's a little bit longer, but whatever. That's we'll, what got here. we'll check it out. Ask, just ask those guys to just mm -hmm. IM us and tell us the exact number of, of cases there were. Um, <clears throat> percent winners, 94% winners. Well, we should be able to figure that out right there. It's got to be 50, whatever it is, 50 something small. Percent winners, 94 and one standard deviation moved out. Remember, this is a bull market. And at the money puts 79%. But here's the difference. Look at the PL, Tony. $1,878 by selling the by having the higher probability of success. And which it did work out that way too. Okay. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's just more instances, but it worked mm -hmm. out that way. And the standard deviation of returns, 456 to 1407. This I felt was really cool information. Sure. Because if I'm a smaller trader and I'm trying to deal with the issue of commissions. And I'm trying to deal with the, like the like the earlier emailer had. I'm trying to deal with the issue of transaction fees, commissions, and also trying to decide. You know, so the at the money put. Let's just say it's and the it nearest. Was, it was four years, but it include the first four months of 2013. Okay, so it's 52. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> if um if I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, why through all the years have we been picking the number between 30 and 35 percent? Now I've validated it. Right. Because the 
Even though finally the, we get validated on something we've been doing, been proved wrong a couple of times. But now this validates it because the nearest out of the money put, let's just say that that has somewhere between fifty and and sixty percent, mm -hmm. and the one standard deviation push is eighty four percent. We've been doing something around seventy to seventy sixty five to seventy five in that range, yep. and. I kind of think that that's probably the sweet spot. And sometimes you don't get to choose. But from one out of the money strike, from the nearest out of the money strike, which obviously works better in a bull market, to to further out to whatever that is, three or four out of the money strikes, look at the numbers. Well, I had no idea that it's 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 com I mean it makes com it's common sense that your percent winners is going to be much higher one standard deviation sure but the p and l difference and the standard deviation of returns is extraordinary it's almost three times as great I mean that's amazing right mm -hmm. so so the argument that we make all the time that you can you know sometimes sometimes people say well you know it's like picking up nickels in front of a steamroller they use that mm -hmm. same line constantly right. and it's it didn't prove out to be that way but it did prove out that you're picking up nickels mm -hmm. all right just I'm going to come back to this slide. Let's go to the next one. So the number of winning trades executed, what was predicted by probabilities, 84% and 55% for the at-the-money put. But part of this is, is due to our data, which was from a period of consistent rallies. Longer data sets would likely show probabilities of profit closer to predicted values. So what our own team is suggesting is that the 90 Go back one slide, Linda, for a second. The 94% and the 79%. The 94% should be closer to 85, and the 79% may be closer to, I think it's a little higher than 55. I think it should be around 60. Mm -hmm. And that's what our own team's even suggesting. But they're saying here that due to due to that the strong bull market. The results are, though. Yeah, they yes. are, they are. Mm -hmm. and, and what's cool about this is, let's just say we went into a prolonged bear market, just for whatever reason. You now have bullets. You now have ammo of kind of where your short calls are going to be. Right. If you use the same strategy but on the call side. And if we think we make a very strong bottom at some point in the future, we can go back and reach to this, which, again, if you're trying to build up equity in a tasty bite size account, this is a very interesting way to support the thesis, the argument for, you know, for having some of that risk on. Yeah. Talk about maximizing okay. returns. That's Let's it. go to the next slide. So – um, just go back for one second, just a quick second. So I just want to repeat this. So again, remember, longer data sets will likely show probabilities of profit closer to predicted values. But before we go to the next one, remember what it's like to sell premium. There's always this little bit of extra edge. Every time we do a study, no matter what we do, the edge always proves out that our performance is greater than whatever the expectation is. The implied volatility has a tendency to overstate actual volatility, and that is the key. Let's go to the next slide. The proportion of potential reward and the variance of that reward is about the same. The capital requirement of the at-the-money put is also proportionally higher than that of the one standard deviation put by approximately, in this case, 1,600 to, um, 650. to 650 because you know the SPY is a big product. Remember, the way you figure out the amount of capital required, you take your short strike and then you add the credit back to that short strike and you take about 18% of that. And that's probably 17 to 18% is generally speaking the number. Very good. Let's go next slide. Selling puts was effective even without management and entering the trade regardless of implied volatility. We have shown that managing winners and selling premium when the implied volatility is above 50% can vastly improve ROC and probability of success. So what, what a future study is going to include is what if we only pick the spots when implied volatility exceeded the 50th percentile? <laughs> What would happen then? Right, how now much? It all together. How much risk would we take off the table, and how would how much would we improve our return on capital and our probability of success under better circumstances? We sold bottoms. And you're saying here. that because we've done market measures where, when the IV percentile is above the 50 percent, the today's option statistics that our results are significantly better. And and right, so we didn't. What we didn't do here was we didn't we didn't sort it by IV percentile. Right. If we had sorted it by IV percentile, we think we would have done better. And which is why we're encouraging you to tune in daily to, for all this stuff because it's so valuable how it all connects. Sure. Let's go to the last slide. 
While we did generate a greater return selling the at-the-money put, 3.14 times more, we also saw a greater variance in P&L, 3.08 times greater. While both strikes pr proved profitable, going further out of the money provides the best opportunity to manage a winner, and the most efficient use of buying power in accounts with limited capital is in selling the one standard deviation put. Now, there are huge takeaways from this. One is it's all about strategy. Two is you can tweak the strategies over yeah. time to improve your chances across the board for all the stuff. Three, we're learning that although the returns were so much greater, for most people, they're willing to take smaller returns in return for greater chances of profitability and more management of that profitability and gr and smaller variance in P&L. Listen, the, also the takeaway is just being a doer. Just do it as opposed to sitting there and being passive in the market. Yeah, our team is not suggesting at all that it's better to take the more risk just because there was more profit from there. No. In fact, Actually, they're saying a little bit of the opposite. They're saying quite the opposite in that their minds, and they're all – remember, our research team is is young guys. Yeah. Young people. I shouldn't say young guys, but just mm -hmm. young people. And they have smaller accounts than Tony and I trade with. And so they live this. They Correct. live in the Tasty Bite world. This is they don't live in the world of you know uh, they don't have. Do a, we wing them and how? Over do we there, wing them and how? Right. Shot. They they live in the Tasty Bites world, and from their standpoint, this makes more sense to them to have the higher chance of success because they like managing winners. There's a there's a much higher level of engagement. There's a significantly better sleep, mm -hmm. and again, it it makes and the limitations of the account just because of its size also suits it too. So. Anyway, just throwing all this information out there, it's really fascinating. Again, I want to repeat the, some of the keys to this segment, and then we'll move on. Um, the at-the-money put generated 3.14 more times return, but we also saw a greater variance in P&L, 3.08. On a smaller count, that we, could be significant. And we did not... We did not chop this up and do it based on implied volatility percentile, which would further... Our, which would further our returns dramatically in in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were just um, – uh, we didn't pick and choose at all. Correct. But pretty think, powerful. Yeah, I got gotcha. I think that's really pretty powerful. In fact, I think this is one of the best Tasty Bite segments that we've put together in a long time because it really – I'm taking stuff home from here, Bet. Mm -hmm. I'm banking it. No. I'm putting it up here. 